Right, welcome to another lesson on uh, organic chemistry. Uh, today I'm going to talk about branched alkanes. It's a rather complicated subject, but I'm going to try and get through it in uh, 10 minutes as we try with every single one of these lessons. So let's just have a quick look at what a branched alkane means. Well, if I was to take uh, this alkane over here, this is uh, my octane, one of the things that I can do with this is instead of having all the carbons in a straight line, I can pull one of them off the end like this, replace that with a, um, a hydrogen from the center of the thing. So what you can see there is I've got one of my hydrogens taken off this carbon here and I have put it on this carbon here. And what I can do is I've got an extra bond spare on this and I can stick another carbon. So what you can see in this structure is that this carbon is only bonded to one other carbon. This carbon is bonded to two other carbons. But this carbon here, this one here, look at it really carefully, is bonded to one, two, three other carbons. Now it's a little bit difficult to see in this model. So uh, the two dimensional diagrams are actually a little bit clearer in this. And that's where we're going to go. We're going to go and look at the um, desktop and we'll have a look and see what this looks like. Now, uh, what I've done here is I've drawn out uh, some uh, carbon molecules, but I've only just put the carbon atoms. So I've put the alkanes in here, but I'm only putting in the carbon atoms so that it's nice and clear. And if I have one carbon, obviously methane, I, can, I can't have any branches because there's no more carbons in the molecule. With two carbons, I uh, can't have any branches because it doesn't matter which way I connect these carbons, they'll only be connected to one other carbon. Again, with uh, three carbons in, in propane, I can't have any branches because it doesn't matter which way I connect these up, the carbons are always going to be connected up in a line. So it's not until I get to butane that I can have a branch. And you see here, I can have a single branch off the central carbon. So this carbon in the middle is connected to two, uh, to three other carbons. So it will only have one spare bond to bind to hydrogen. Uh, if we go up to five carbons, this is uh, essentially um, the pentane formula. But uh, what you can see here is that this carbon here now has, uh, is bonded to three other carbons and we have a branch which includes a single uh, extra carbon. Now you could say, well, what happens if we put an extra carbon on there? Well, we have to take one off here and we end up with pretty much the same structure. So that's pretty much the only form you can get with a five carbon branched alkane. Six carbon branch alkanes, on the other hand, are slightly different. I can take uh, a single carbon out of the six carbon chain and bond it onto one of the other carbons. And there's two ways I can do this. I can do this on the second carbon in the chain. Obviously, if I do it in the first, I've just got a straight chain. I can do it in the second carbon in the chain, there. And you might say, well, can you not do it on the uh, fourth carbon in the chain? You can, but then if I turn it over, it's going to be the same as this. So, uh, but I can put it on the middle carbon in the chain. So I can get uh, two different kinds of branch here. All right. Now, um, we'll come back to naming that in a little minute. Uh, obviously, when we go all the way up to eight carbons, it's possible to uh, have branches going off in different places. And you can make several different types of molecules with your uh, eight carbons. And so uh, it's possible to make several different types. Now, these different types of uh, molecules that you can make are called isomers. These are called isomers. The reason is they have the same molecular formula. These are carbon, these are six, so it's going to be C6H, six times two is 12, plus two is 14. Okay, C8H16, 18, 18, that'll be 18. Okay, so um, I can make two different structures of this molecule, at least, all right? Up here, I might be able to make quite a few more. So uh, for your homework this time, I haven't given you homework yet in these lessons, but for your homework this time, I'd like you to think about how many different possible structures there are, how many different ways are there connecting up these carbons so that I get different structures. 
And remember, you can turn them around and pull them across uh, and uh, they have to be different in every way you look at them. OK, so there's your homework. How many isomers are there of C88H18? It's an alkane and that's the alkane formula. Now, we name these things um, in uh, a slightly different way because you might say, well, here we have down here, I have uh, six carbons. So that's obviously going to be hexane. All right. But no, it's not. That's not what we call it anymore. What we do is we just name the longest chain. We name the longest chain. So that's going to be uh, one, two, three, four, five. That's going to be pentane. So this thing here is going to be called pentane. We take the longest chain of carbons. There's another chain here, but that's only four. There's another chain there. There's only four. OK, so we take the longest chain. That's going to be pentane. And what we do is we refer to this thing uh, ahead of the name of the base molecule. OK, so we are going to add a, another prefix onto the base molecule that represents a single carbon in a branch. And the names of those single carbons and branches are up here. OK, so the branch names, we use the suffix YL. So we take our one carbon, which is meth, remember from the previous lesson, meth uh, isle, methyl, ethyl if you've got two carbons, propyl if you've got three carbons, butyl if you've got four carbons. We're not going to see these things uh, in uh, our learning at National 5, but you will see them when you do higher chemistry. So one carbon is methyl, so it's going to be methyl pentane. So this stuff now is called methylpentane, and there's two different isomers. So this one up here has um, the, the methyl group on the second carbon in the chain, and this one here has the methyl group on the third carbon in the chain. So I need to tell uh, everyone where that methyl group is, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to number the carbons from one end, and I'll use the smallest number I can get so, for example, this one here, I can number from this end, and I get one, two. So that carbon is carbon number two. So the methyl is attached to carbon number two. Or I could number it from the other end, one, two, three, four. The carbon would be uh, before methyl uh, pentane. But no, we don't do that. We use the smallest number we can. So it's going to be two. So that one up there is two methyl pentane. All right, two methyl pentane. This one down here, one, two, three, one, two, three, doesn't matter which way we go. Uh, we're going to have uh, three methyl pentane. Okay, that's going to be three methyl pentane. Now, uh, it's possible that uh, one, two, three, four, you could potentially call this butane with an ethyl group on it. But remember, you always pick the longest chain when you're naming the base molecule, and then you work out the side branches. All right? So it's a little bit complicated. I think in our next lesson, we might do some practice at this, uh, and we'll try and um, remember this information. But if you can remember all of this, and for your homework, remember you're trying to work out how many isomers there are of C8H18. All right? Now, Hopefully I've managed to do that in just um, less than 10 minutes. It's a very quick run through. Obviously, there's a lot of information in there. What you do is if you didn't catch it all, go back start the video again at the beginning and work through it again. The great thing about video is you can watch it over and over again as long as it's not too long. So I'm going to say goodbye now and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson.